achievement. <laughs> oh my god, that was really good. It was actually quite fun. <laughs> oh, get me. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you caught something. Did you hit a bomb? Oh, it's great to be able to travel again, isn't it? After two years of absence from the snow scene, I can tell you, we were glad to be back. And what a way to start the new year with a snow trip to Hakuba in Japan. Let's just start by saying that we're not professional skiers. Nope, we don't do double black diamond runs, nor are you going to see us do 360 backflips at the snow park anytime soon. Hey, we're just happy to be able to slide down green runs, or just a slide. we we'll just throw a few snowballs at each other. We're just a family happy to see snow again. For 10 days, we stayed at three different accommodations, skied at four different resorts, soaked our bodies in numerous onsens, ate a ton of ramen, and most importantly, we left with plenty of smiles on our face. Being our first trip to Hakuba, there were probably a few things we wish we knew before we got there. Hence, this video is exactly for those planning to go to Hakuba for the first time. I hope it helps. First, let's talk about location. Hakuba, compared to other famous resorts around Japan, is relatively accessible from major cities on the main island, namely Tokyo and Osaka. If you take a bullet train from Tokyo, you can get here in 3 to 4 hours flat. Getting here is probably not the hard part. For us, it's realizing that Hakuba, or specifically the ski resorts near Hakuba, are really, really spread out. When someone says they've skied at Hakuba, you probably need to ask, which one? And here's what I mean. Hakuba Town Center is shown on the map here with this little shaded red box. There is no Hakuba Ski Resort. Instead, last time I counted, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ski resorts spread out about 22 kilometers apart from one end to another. So now comes the questions. Where should I stay? Which ski resort should I go to? How do I get around? Is it easy to get food? So many decisions, so many choices. So let's move on to talk about each topic. Now, to keep things simple, with ski resorts that spread out, you probably need to ask yourself if there is a particular ski resort you prefer to ski at. If there is, go for it, in case closed. But if you're like me, and especially if it's your first time, you probably want to try out a couple of different ski resorts. In that case, here's three options for you to consider. Number one, I call this the Staying near the Hakuba Hapo bus terminal option. It is the liveliest part of town, 
you have plenty of choices of restaurants, shopping, and easy access to a convenience store. You pretty much be able to get to any ski resorts from here, given it is the main bus terminal. I find the information center at the bus terminal super helpful as well. And it will save you a lot of trouble when you need help. And look, you appreciate that there is a Lawson convenience store just minutes walk away from here. That store is your best friend for any of those emergency snacks, alcohol supplies, as well as any forgotten charges, gloves, batteries, whatever. A good example of hotel for this option is Bergtor Marukita. Look, it's no five-star hotel, but it is comfortable for the three of us. We love the Japanese star bed on tatami floors, and apparently I slept exceptionally well. Look, if you ask Ethan, he'll tell you Wi-Fi isn't particularly great. We have to stand right next to the toilet just to get in with. Okay? <laughs> but for us, we appreciate the hospitality with a generous offer to pick us up and drop us off when we needed their help to move around. It's a sound choice if convenience is important to you. Number two, I call this a little bit of peace and quiet please option. If you're the type that perhaps don't like crowds, prefer a bit of peace and quiet, but still want convenient access to most ski resorts, then consider staying just a little bit away from the busy main town. For extra convenience, we suggest taking a look at the free shuttle bus map online and pick a hotel that the free local shuttle buses stop at. Your daily commute to the ski slopes will be super easy. A good example of this is Hotel Hakuba. It's about 10 to 15 minutes walk away from town. And again, it's not a super fancy hotel. Oh my god, three beds. It's okay. Damn, that's awesome. Ah. We did have a nice view of the nearby Hapo One ski resort right from our room window. The hotel has a pretty nice Japanese buffet restaurant for breakfast and dinner as well. And if you're bored, there's plenty of local Japanese restaurants nearby. Even a Starbucks at Snow Peak Land Station if you must have a Starbucks coffee. Oh, and as a side note, Starbucks in Japan is actually pretty affordable. The star feature for us staying at Hotel Hakuba is that there are buses that stop right at the front door of this hotel for just about every ski resort in Hakuba. Number three. Now I call this the posh holiday home, but a little different option. With this hotel, it's actually a good 10 to 15 minutes away from Hakuba main town by car. You can get away without a rental car like we did, but it's probably better if you have a car, provided you don't mind dealing with the hassle of driving. It's called Raw Hotel. Well, as you can see, it's pretty raw given we're literally staying in containers joined together to make a hotel room. Interior is very roomy, nice and modern. and even has a jacuzzi on the roof. Although when it snows heavily, you probably don't get to use it. There's not as many food options nearby, but there's a pretty awesome ramen shop owned and run by the hotel owner. I've gotta say, they cook up some of the best ramen I've ever had in Japan. Despite it being further away from town, you still be able to go to different ski resorts. Although you need to make an extra stop to the nearest main ski resort, in this case, Goryu Ski Resort. From there, you can almost get to any other ski resorts around Hakuba. Not as convenient, but bearable. At the end of the day, you probably can't go wrong with any of the accommodation we recommended above, with each giving you a slightly different Hakuba experience. With eight ski resorts to choose from, 
it's unlikely that you'll be able to cover them all in one trip. Unless you're here for extended period of time, or you go to two or three different resorts in a single day. Hagubo is well known for good quality snow, and all of them have very good ski lift infrastructure. If you stay at any of the three accommodation we just covered, you should be able to cover at least four resorts nearby in just a few days. Namely, Goryu, Hagoba 47, Hapoone, and Iwatake Ski Resort. To be honest, I probably won't be able to tell you which one of them is the best, because it is pretty subjective. Frankly, they're all good in their own ways. Want the biggest one in Hakuba? Go to Hapoone. Want an interconnected resort? Then go to Goryu Ski Resort, which allows you to ski over to Hakuba 47. Want a resort that isn't all about skiing? Go to Iwatake, where you can bring your pet, go sit on rather Instagrammable swing, or drink high tea while soaking in some pretty views. Want a resort that's fantastic for beginners? Go to Tsugaike. Want powder tree runs? I hear Kotina Ski Resort is fantastic for that. My take? Well, your experience of a ski resort will often have nothing to do with the ski resort itself. It may depend on the people around you, your instructor, your loved ones, your friends, or maybe the snow condition of the day, your skill level, the weather of the day. It really didn't matter which resorts we were at. As long as you or your family has a big smile on your face, that's really all that matters. Look, ultimately, we love skiing in Japan, not because of a specific resort or its great powder. We came here because there is simply a ton more that Japan has to offer other than skiing. It didn't actually matter all that much which accommodation we stayed or ski resort we ended up skiing at. The total experience, the hot onsens, vending machines that happen to sell dried tarantulas, the toilets that clean your butt, the local food, the list goes on. It's the one country that we keep coming back to every single year and continues to be surprised. Anyway, we hope you find this video helpful. Please hit the like button, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Have a great day.